know why I'm, I'm to repeat this, but it's something that doesn't seem like a very round table because of the three of us. Yeah, as, as we are not so round people, it, it could be a, a sort of, of summarizing and, and discussion. Final discussion more than a round table. But it's up to you. Start. And this is um, again something that uh, that has. 
that's a struggle today. I just think, um, and uh, in general, I think is the way the way things are going. So digitization. Um, we used to th think, you know, yes, I'm going to have a digitization project. I'm going to take this body of material and I'm going to digitize it this way and I'm going to put it into this form and people will be able to access it on the web and they will be able to do this, this, and this. Uh, that's the old-fashioned way. Benjamin certainly made this case uh, very clearly this morning that uh, you make everything available to people and then they can do whatever they like uh, with it. And hopefully they will do things again that we ourselves had not originally thought of. So I think that would be my, uh, what I've come away with anyway, was the um, uh, very positive sense that there's a huge amount of going on out there and that we are doing what we can to make it available to as many people as possible. So, I'll stop there. Well, uh, I would say in a sense, at the beginning the same, uh, in this, uh, with the idea that uh, we have uh, a quantity of resources with uh, databases uh, which are really increasing and even uh, some of them uh, were not uh, presented here uh, because, for example, uh, we didn't say anything about AIMA because uh, the president would be here today, but I, I must first thank Lino for thinking about the possibility to show us the diversity of databases from one country to the other one, and we have a, a better idea of um, the, the, the basis on which we can uh, develop interoperability. So, quantity increasing from um, uh, year to year and also uh, not always well balanced between uh, databases with uh, images and tools for interpretation. It has been uh, all, uh, also said several times. Uh, another uh, thing is um, the importance of the idea of complexity. Complexity was one of the key words of our um, meeting. Uh, complexity which means um, the uh, complexity of the object, of the manuscript, of the manuscripts uh, in plural. And so in this case the, the dangers uh, of trying to, to find standards where we have so many different objects and also the, the challenge for people who use databases made with manuscripts because uh, we, uh, there is a problem with standardization is to, to let aside important things. And at the same time, the necessity of trying to find these standards because uh, for users, uh, they need simplicity, they need uh, to find their way in the complexity of things. And so uh, we are in between uh, these uh, two realities and uh, at the same time, not only simplicity for but uh, also conviviality, uh, which is also a problem in some uh, kind of databases or uh, systems or structures which are too much complicated for uh, the ordinary mankind uh, as I am a part of it. Uh, then, I would say, uh, I was also struck by the question which uh, stayed uh, and, and came back, what is a manuscript? Finally, what is a manuscript and also the difficulty to uh, go from the manuscript in three dimensions to uh, what is in, uh, on the internet. And uh, we had two dimensions, uh, but three dimensions were difficult to, to keep. And we had the necessity to uh, remind that we come from an object to a representation, and again this was the last part of uh, semantic web. Uh, from the object to representation, with uh, especially uh, the question of the facsimile, which uh, has been uh, presented uh, this morning. So, uh, what is a manuscript? Uh, also, what is a database? What is a database in the sense? Because uh, we just had the, um, uh, the idea just now that a database uh, is, uh, is not a target, it is a point of departure. Uh, I wonder whether it is uh, either a target or a point of departure. I would say first, in my opinion, as I can see, it is a tool. Uh, it is a tool which is done with, not with uh, something which is uh, essentially 
the truth. But uh, we are not working with exact sciences, but with human science. And it is always something approximative. And we have to critique all the time the data which are in the databases. So I wonder really what it is, uh, databases. But I, for me, uh, really, it's mainly a tool. And we have to know that a tool is not able to do anything. Uh, it does something very well and something else not exactly as well as we would like to. Well, um, then uh, I, I would say, uh, even for us, pedagogy is important. Uh, if uh, we, uh, we have an idea of what are manuscripts and what are tools like databases, we need to explain it to other people who are users of uh, these uh, tools uh, we produce. And uh, I was uh, interested by the fact that uh, all of us uh, were very pleased as young children by actions and by images which helped us to understand, to follow all these difficult topics which have been uh, explained. So I would propose also that our uh, uh, site on internet would use these tools in order to help people to enter in uh, our construction. This is my first proposal. Then uh, I, uh, I would say something else about uh, uh, the use of internet. Uh, I had a feeling that uh, uh, we had two uh, different tools uh, and that databases were very different from uh, digital editions. And with the examples of digital editions, which were just a part of uh, our interest now, because the main problem was about databases, uh, it's the best uh, moment uh, when I could imagine uh, the use of the internet as a mise-en-scene, where we can uh, use all the possibilities <laughs> to, uh, to put together uh, text and interpretations of the text and disseminations of the text, even interpretation of music and so on. So uh, we create something new uh, for, uh, with the internet uh, for this kind of work. For uh, databases, I'm not sure that it's the same. I, I think it's something much uh, more crude. And so, uh, in this situation, what can we do in order to uh, progress uh, concretely? Not perhaps um, try to make something completely uh, new and uh, different from what we started or to, to, uh, uh, to prepare and to produce with existing uh, databases. But uh, really, what has been started with the collaboration between uh, the CISMEL and the IRHT, which is to, uh, to take what exists and try with that to show how it can be used, better used with a, a, a larger uh, cloud of uh, uh, interrogation uh, using uh, uh, these uh, standards and first, of course, chef marks. And uh, uh, this we have shown that it's possible. So then really I think that we are in the situation where it is possible to go further on with the shelf maps and have a larger cloud there using the possibilities by proposed by Manuscripta Medievalia, by Manuscriptorium, by Stanford University and so on, and try to, to see what happens there, not trying to do something new, but something just efficient opening the cloud in this particular standard. Then I think that we have to work uh, quickly on other standards like persons, because persons is a challenge, it's difficult, and there, if we succeed to find the way for interrogation, larger interrogation about person, it will be another very important step. Uh, close to person, it has been said on the first day, anon anonymous text. This is another very large part of uh, our data and uh, uh, this is very difficult too because many anonymous tests don't even have titles and so we find again the problem of the incident and perhaps we have to come back also to uh, the use of uh, uh, this other tool of uh, the service of incident. I don't know but I think that uh, it is something which have, uh, has to be put in, in our um, uh, in uh, in our scope. Uh, then, after, after um, uh, these uh, uh, chef marks, a person's uh, anonymous text in Zipit, perhaps also uh, working on dates uh, using uh, all uh, the resources which have been shown for, from the um, 
manuscripti datati from Italia and also uh, the catalog of manuscripti datati from the IRHT. We have indexes uh, there and perhaps we can also um, put them together and try to do something with them. And also bibliographies. Bibliographies because they are not visible on uh, uh, internet, in the databases immediately. We have to extract them from different databases, for example, the DAF or Initial, they are not immediately present and so it would be interesting to extract them uh, thanks to some tools and try to uh, develop interoperability with that. So I really think that what was very useful, concretely useful in this meeting was just to open the possibilities of concrete uh, uh, quick realizations, uh, of course at different steps, but it doesn't seem impossible to go on and this is uh, really an important realization of what we try to do. The last thing I would like to say is that um, whom are we working for? We are working essentially for uh, scholars, uh, students also, who are doing research on humanities and even if uh, uh, it is uh, very exciting to think about the possibility of the semantic web, at a certain moment I think we have to, uh, to keep in our minds what has been uh, the uh, very artisanal way of working in the old times when I was a young scholar. And uh, there was also something very positive there, because we were working like poets. We were trying to discover something new, which was not the uh, relation, the, uh, the rational relation between things, but we were inventing relations and we were talking about the humanity. And so I, I think that we have also to have it in mind because uh, what we are working uh, with, all these data, all these databases are really um, a, a way of going on with creativity, but creativity is in human mind. I'm not certain that it's only on the internet. So at a certain moment, I think that we have to come back with our all the tools that we are creating come back to uh, the, the experience of research, uh, which is mainly creativity from the human mind. This is my son. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, would not, uh, I have not to add to what my uh, colleagues have said this, uh, till now. I will uh, only stress two, two or three points. Uh, the first I asked myself in the last, uh, since we have this construction and uh, this workshop, which are the, the profound motivations of all this uh, energy we put uh, in, uh, we all, uh, friends and colleagues put in that, in that action since the beginning and so on. And I have uh, a real confirmation here on that point, on two or three points. I think that if we resemble some, some words who, who have been said many times in these days, fragmentation, wall and gardens, uh, and so on and so on, we could make a list and that what, what, we, which, what is the common, the common element or the common sense in any sense, is that I think that we, uh, the medieval studies in general, if we are conscious or not, have a, a, I will not say the frustration, but the desire, especially to be positive, the desire to overcome at least two, uh, two objectives which uh, uh, are connected with technologies and, and, and connected in that sense that this desire, this, uh, uh, that the technology can help medievalists as other humanists and all the disciplines, but I speak only for medieval studies, which uh, I, I, I know less, uh, less worse than the others. This is the fragmentation. The first is the fragmentation. Um, the fragment in, in, uh, this is not what we had as, uh, as I was a student. I am an old man. As a real student or our, our professors at that time, our teachers, they did 
not uh, have before, uh, before them uh, the problem of fragmentation. Uh, they saw a global Middle Ages uh, which was fragmented, but they didn't not think on a fragmented Middle Ages. It was the Latin Middle Ages, it was the vernacular Middle Ages, the continuous Romanist, Claudio uh, Lodardi and Franciscini were, and so on, and the, the, the historians were also, they, they don't, didn't have, in my eyes, this problem. The second problem they did not have, and also in, myself as a young student, we didn't uh, realize the problem in that, in that sense, was uh, the fact, I speak here, on the influence of the last, uh, of the last, uh, I think that our all professors, I speak for myself, so the, 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 the last generations, did not have the impression they didn't uh, dominate <coughs> uh, their uh, their uh, subject, their um, uh, research. Uh, I heard many times, as I was a young student, uh, this one, il domine son champ. Il domine son champ. Even, even afterwards, uh, le, le maître de Dacron, I can't remember, uh, le maire. Il domine le Byzantinisme. This was normal to say. This is not, not possible to say now. Uh, and uh, the, set, the third point uh, we are uh, wish to, to have, to, to have more and probably more than 50 years ago or 40 years ago or 80 years ago, is to have uh, constantly new possibilities to have new questions. This is also not what it was at that time. So, and we, I, 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 saw, I think that we uh, are here because we think implicitly or not implicitly with uh, profound reflection on that or not, this is not a problem, that new technologies can uh, overcome, can help us to pass to this fragmentation which is, uh, this is uh, real design, very interesting, very important, Middle Ages, Middle Medieval Europe cannot be seen only uh, in the Latin literature or only in the Roman literature or, or only in Slavonic uh, literature and so on. Medieval Europe is a very fragment, very com complex world and so on, I have not to insist on that. But this is, the problem is how we can and probably we think, rightly or not rightly, that uh, databases and uh, new technologies can help us to overcome this fragmentation. We think, probably rightly, and I have also had a confirmation in all these days, and also in the last, that potentially, I do not be able, because I am too old, to understand uh, all the details and uh, to use probably these sophisticated machines but probably but this is not my the problem is not uh, is the problem is the young the young researcher it is uh, it's not a problem and we think that the new technologies can help us with semantic web and so on and so on to have constantly new questions to to, to the immense uh, amount of, um, of um, data which uh, are now uh, data, we had already an amount of data, but now there are data who can be questioned. Uh, data in printed books cannot be questioned in the same, in the same, the same way. And uh, the third is uh, to find probably consciously or unconsciously a new the, 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 the lost paradise of the global uh, of the possibility to 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 cover to to control a domain of, of science. Uh, this is probably what uh, we because <coughs> because we are <coughs> Now the problem is that we have to be concrete uh, and uh, uh, from the cost action, from the responsibility I have in the cost action I have to be concrete. We cannot only, we have 
the first point to the fragmentation of uh, databases of savoir, yeah? which, uh, because all these databases are nationally fragmented, are uh, disciplinary fragmented, uh, thematically fragmented, and the technology can, if you are uh, dissolved the bon volonté, we can also institutionally overcome to uh, difficulties we, which could uh, be worse in the past. This is the first result and it is a very concrete result and we have to go on, I think, to in, in this direction, in, in our post action, to realize what is possible. But we know, I am convinced that I have much learned here and uh, it was very impressive from time to time to what, what will be the future uh, what will be the future I, I imagine in three years if we have the same workshop it will be completely different as it was three years ago I think three or four years, or four years ago globally intended institutionally and so on and so on it was for me difficult to imagine to have 22 people uh, uh, countries in a cost action I didn't know uh, even what was a cost action uh, four years ago so uh, this is this is, we can be optimistic in that sense I don't know if uh, it will be possible to uh, to adapt this is my little hesitation, but because of my age, um, it will be so easy to adapt a sophisticated uh, uh, I don't know which word I have to, to, to use, but uh, to all to all the databases we have, but I am sure that in one way or another, in the future, this will be uh, not only necessary but possible because uh, I think that the scientific community, in one way or another, or another uh, and this is the, one of the most important motivations of all intellectuals in all periods and so on, to have the possibility to, to, to have new answers to new questions. The, the modalities are not the same, but have never been the same. But this will come. I am not sure that in our cost action we will come at the end of the cost action with this adaptability. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. But I am sure that at least of the first level we can, uh, we can uh, get uh, and we have to to realize uh, a lot of things, but I am sure also that in, in, in one year, in two years, uh, many things, many, much will happen because already in the last, in the last months, many uh, things and in the last weeks, uh, things which appear to us, uh, I think also Nicole Berriou can uh, agree with that, with, uh, with me, uh, appeared for many reasons, personal, institutional, and so on, not so possible. And they are, they, <coughs> they are, have been possible. And so <coughs> this is, uh, I think, uh, a reason to be optimistic. At least the fragmentation will be less, uh, less, less uh, huge in the next time, thanks to the cost action. The new questions will be satisfied for some reasons, will not be completely satisfied, but we know, will never be completely satisfied, but probably this, this, the difficult to adapt uh, all the, the sophisticated who come from uh, to our databases, but I think we, we will go in that direction. But in any case, uh, it was a very useful, a very important uh, workshop in that sense. We have learned to speak together, we have learned to uh, go on, on the concrete, uh, in the concrete dimensions and, uh, and we have also learned that outside our medieval studies, for, not for all, many of 
distant uh, directions uh, we, we thought when we arrived here in uh, Florence for this workshop. Now we have to, to go on. The next step will be Santiago uh, in November. We had a steering group, uh, now we are at lunch, and we have also already organized our, our next brunch. Uh, the Compostela will be very important because for, uh, we have to, to learn and to, to present to our colleagues uh, and so on. Uh, concrete realizations. We had a good uh, uh, many months uh, before us, and uh, this will be uh, this will be a, a very uh, important. This is an important uh, an important event for our for the history of our cost action, uh, and uh, at least on the fragmentation level, we will have been we will uh, have. Uh, many results, I, I, I am sure, and I hope also on, on more uh, more general, general technological problematics and semantics and so on, this we, we have not, of course, to, to ignore. I will, uh, uh, I know that uh, uh, a representative of the University of Santiago is here, if he uh, can uh, uh, so 